Hi there, my name is Cameron and I work for YK International. We've been exploring in this session what does it mean to build a just world, one that's free from discrimination. And this is something that's really important to us as a charity at YK. And you might think, why does a charity that partners with local YMCAs around the world, helping them to tackle poverty in their context, what's that got to do with the fight against racism? What's that got to do with the fight uh, against sexism? And it's because uh, we care about the whole person. We want to see every young person's potential fulfilled, and that means more than uh, just solving poverty, just giving them more money in their pockets. Uh, it means uh, something about their whole being. And that battle against racism uh, and sexism is part of the same battle. If we create a world without poverty, but where discrimination still remains, then that's not a just world. And part of the reason we're particularly passionate about that is because the kind of work that we do, it's often called development or aid, has often been part of the problem rather than the solution when it comes to discrimination. And to understand that, we've got to understand something called colonialism. Now, colonialism uh, is when a rich, powerful country, usually a European one, particularly the United Kingdom, uh, took over a country with fewer economic or military resources and imposed their rule on it without the local people wanting that to happen. And big decisions uh, about the colony, about this country, would be made thousands of miles away, often by people who knew nothing about the country uh, and people who uh, didn't care at all about the well-being of the people of that country. And in the overwhelming majority of cases, this was a country with a white majority population taking over a country with a black majority population. Uh, and all this was done uh, primarily in the pursuit of profit and power. They wanted to dominate, they wanted to, to plunder these countries for their resources. But it was also because uh, these Western countries thought that their ideas and their culture was superior. And that really they were doing these countries a favour by imposing their rule on them, uh, by giving them uh, their religion, by giving them their cultures, uh, by giving them their rules. And this is what we might call a colonial mindset. I am better than these people, they need me because they're not good enough by themselves. And unfortunately, uh, development and aid and tackling poverty abroad has often been underpinned by some of these same assumptions. Now, charities haven't been exploiting these countries for profit. Uh, but sometimes the way charities go about tackling poverty uh, still presumes uh, that these countries need us or that they need our way of doing things. I wonder if you know what it feels like uh, when people presume that you don't have the capacity or the knowledge or the skills to achieve something. When people presume that you're not capable uh, of tackling challenges by yourself. Now imagine, and some of you won't need to imagine this because it will actually have happened, imagine that people presumed this because of the colour of your skin, or because of your gender, um, or because of something else. Um, have a quick chat, pause this video, uh, and chat about how that might feel, or how indeed that does feel. Now this is really important for us uh, in the way that we conduct our work at YCARE. We want to fight against uh, these colonial mindsets. Uh, and we do that both in the way that we conduct our work and also in the way that we communicate it. So in the way we, that we do our work when we partner with YMCAs, uh, we put communities in the driving seat. We presume that local communities have the skills and the capabilities and that we should only be in a supporting role, not a leading role because they have uh, the knowledge to tackle poverty in their situation. I was chatting to one of our partners recently uh, and she said, we don't feel like the little sister to the big sister. And that's absolutely uh, the kind of feedback we want to receive. 
We don't want uh, our partners, our partner YMCA's, to feel that they are uh, subordinate or that they are lesser than we are. We're on a level playing field and they uh, are the ones in charge. We also do this in the way we communicate our work. Uh, we try not to stereotype or play on people's stereotypes uh, of people in low income countries. It would be really easy to, uh, and some charities have done this in the past, um, to present people uh, in a way that doesn't uh, retain their dignity, that only shows them at their worst, which presents a country as if uh, poverty is what defines it, that everyone is in squalor and that there's no redeeming features. And what we try to do is to show off people's achievements uh, and to really uh, show communities at their best uh, and not just um, plaster pictures of, uh, of crying children everywhere in order to tug at people's heartstrings. Uh, we don't want to play that game. We want to show people uh, how they truly are uh, and how they want their stories to be told. And we don't want to present uh, ourselves, the people coming into these countries, as the saviours. Uh, we want to show that the local communities themselves are the heroes, uh, not the people who come into that community. We recognise that we're still on a journey with this, but it's one that we're absolutely committed to. I wonder if what I've said has, has sparked anything in your minds uh, about what it means to build a just world free from discrimination in your context. Uh, as I come to a close, have a talk about that. <laughs>